um, what I wanted you to do. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you could multiply these numbers uh, and get the simplest form of the answer. Now, uh, you could start by, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the numerator, you multiply straight across the denominator, <clears throat> and then recognize that both 60 and 45 are divisible by, um, uh, let's see here, they're divisible by 5 and divisible by something bigger. 15. They're both divisible by 15. Okay, 60 divided by 15 is 4, 45 divided by 15 is 3, so 4 thirds. Now, you could have also gotten this by looking at this as 3 times, I'm going to split 20 up into 4 times 5. And I'm going to split 9 up into 3 times 3. Now, based on what we know about rational numbers and stuff, if we're multiplying, we can cancel common factors in the numerator and the denominator. And that is another way that you could have gotten to the answer of 4 thirds. Okay? Um, similarly, if you look at the second one, you could have gotten the answer of 4 thirds. If we split 14 up into 7 times 2, well, we've got 7 times 2 over 7 times 2. Now, if all those cancel, the answer is not 0, okay? The answer is 1. Um, when terms cancel, it just means that um, you've divided something by itself, so that is equal to 1. It is not equal to 0, so please keep that in mind. Now, if we divide, when you divide by a fraction, I don't know if you remember this from middle school, but when you divide by a fraction, what you can do is you can flip the second one over and it turns into multiplication. Okay? Dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So if we do a similar thing here, we've got 4 over 16, so that leaves us with 4 in the denominator. 6 and 9 are both divisible by 3. So that leaves us with 2 and 3. And then we can factor, or we can simplify a little bit more. 2 over 4 is 2. So nothing in the numerator, well, it's not really nothing. It's 1 is in the numerator, and we have 3 times 2, which is 6, in the denominator. Okay? That is the best way to simplify this without a calculator. Okay? And then one final one that you couldn't see initially 8 divided by 28 over 5. We've got a whole number divided by a fraction. The same basic principle applies. Dividing by a fraction means that you turn it into multiplication and you multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, those are both divisible by 4. So we've got 2 times 5 is 10. 10 over 7 is the simplest form of 8 divided by 28 over 5. Okay? Now, why do we just go through this lesson on fractions? Because, you know, rational numbers are fractions with variables. So we're going to extend this idea to uh, include variables as well. So, um, first of all, if you are a step... Okay, so let's look at an example here. And we have 5 over x minus 1 times x minus 1 over 25 times x minus 2. Now, in this case, there's not really any factoring to be done. We don't have any quadratic expressions. Uh, x minus 1 cannot be factored. x minus 2 is in factored form. Uh, technically, we could factor the 25. <clears throat> I think that helps us visually see what we're talking about. So this is a step that once you get used to this, you can kind of start leaving out. Um, but what I mean by multiply is this needs to become one single fraction. So we've got 5 times x minus 1. Okay, notice, again, I'm leaving it in factored form. <clears throat> I'm going to move the 25, move coefficients to the front. Uh, it's easy to lose track of them if you leave them further down in the expression. And I am, for clarity, I'm going to rewrite it as 5 times 5. It's not necessarily something you have to do. Um, and then we've got x minus 1 times x minus 2. Now, since we have just multiplication in the numerator, I know there's a minus sign up there, okay? But it's not separating factors. It's part of a factor. So let's look at what we can cancel. We've got 5 here and 5 here. We can cancel that. We've got x minus 1 in the top and x minus 1 in the bottom. So 
everything in the numerator canceled, so we need to put a 1 in its place. And then in the denominator, we're left with that one factor of 5, and we're left with x minus 2. Uh, and there's not really, there's no simplifying to do at this point. If you really want to, you could multiply that out. Sometimes the answer key or a multiple choice answer choice may have that multiplied out. But I'm fine with you leaving it in factored form. I don't want you to, to try and do more and end up making a mistake by, you know, forgetting to multiply the negative 2 by 5 or something like that. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Let's look at another one. We've got r over r minus 1 times r minus 1 over r squared. Now, if I was really doing this on my paper, this is what I would do. I would not end up rewriting all this stuff all over again. Since this is multiplication, pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that line. It's going to become one fraction. I'm going to put parentheses around my um, <clears throat> linear binomial terms, okay, my linear factors there, the r minus 1s. And I'm going to rewrite r squared as r times r so that I can see exactly what cancels. I have one R in the top. I've got two of them in the bottom. I can cancel one of those. It's one for one. Okay. I can cancel the R minus ones. So again, everything in the numerator canceled. So I gotta put a one in its place. The only thing I have left in the denominator is a single R. And that's it. So. Those are pretty simple examples, but they're, they tend to be the ones that trip people up the most because you get used to looking at ones like this um, and thinking that there's a whole bunch of factoring you need to do and you kind of overlook canceling those monomials and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to write down this example and then we will work it out. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go piece by piece. I'm going to start with the first numerator. I'm going to factor that as much as I possibly can and then I'm going to work my way through the other ones. All right, so that first numerator is a quadratic trinomial, so I know that it's going to be a binomial times a binomial. 2x times x is going to give us 2x squared. I've got to figure out how to place my factors of 6 so that I can end up getting 1 in the middle. And I believe if I put 3 first and 2 second, the outside is going to give me 4x, the inside is going to give me 3x. I need positive 4x minus 3x to give me positive 1x. And negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. Okay? So that's the first numerator. The second numerator, I need to begin by taking out a GCF. Now, for the sake of saving myself some space, I'm going to take out the GCF right here. Okay? I'm going to take out the x. That's going to leave me with x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then I'm going to go back to where I was factoring down here and factor the trinomial. Okay? If you don't like that, that's fine. Okay? That's just how I would do it on my paper um, when I'm trying to factor. Okay? x squared minus 3x plus 2 factors into x minus 2 times x minus 1. So now my numerators are completely factored. I'm going to turn to my denominators. <coughs> First denominator, that factors into x plus 5 times x minus 1. Second denominator, I need to begin by taking out um, a GCF, uh, or actually, I don't even, yeah, I don't need to begin, that's all that I can do. It has a GCF of 2x. And when I take out that GCF of 2x, I'm left with 2x minus 3. Now, it's not foolproof. Um, now, I don't think that anything in here was tremendously difficult to capture. Uh, but sometimes, if you run into an expression that seems to be a little difficult to capture, if you have already factored, say, the numerator, and you run into something in the denominator that's you can kind of use those as kind of guides to see if that will help you factor out the expression. We have got an example of that a little bit later on. Uh, but 
I wanted to go ahead and mention. All right, so let's see what we have in common in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, 2x minus 3, we've got that in the top and in the bottom. Um, we've got an x minus 1 in the top and in the bottom. We've got a GCF factor of x in the top and in the bottom. It's okay that the bottom one has 2, okay? You just don't, you just don't cancel out the 2, but you cancel out the x part of it. Um, and that's it, okay? So what we have left in the numerator, we have x plus 2 times x minus 2. In the denominator, uh, coefficients, okay, coefficients need to go in the front. So that 2 needs to go first, and then x plus 5 is the only linear factor that we have left down there in the denominator. So that is fully simplified. Little Amoeba friends, very active this morning. Let me turn it over to you. All right, one more like this. 